The hard problem of consciousness is one of the single greatest mysteries facing modern science today. In fact, this mystery is so significant that it's forcing us to reconsider some of our most basic assumptions about the nature of reality. It is endlessly fascinating to me the way that we are a mystery to ourselves. I mean, every single one of us is conscious. It's the most ordinary thing, and yet no one knows what consciousness actually is. What is the nature of consciousness? Not only is this one of the biggest unanswered questions in science and philosophy, this is also the central question in all of the world's spiritual traditions, is very simply, what is the self? Who are we really? Is it possible that there's more to what we are than this one physical human lifetime? The hard problem goes right to the center of all of these questions, so in this video, I'm going to share a simple explanation as to what that term actually means. And I'm also going to share why it's no exaggeration to say that this could change everything that we know. This could be leading us to the next great scientific revolution that transforms humankind as a collective. Hey everyone, my name is Jonas, and all throughout human history, all of the world's greatest spiritual teachers have universally taught that the key to higher consciousness can only be found if we look within. And that's exactly what we're doing here today. Now the hard problem of consciousness is a term which we can define as the problem of explaining how the material brain gives rise to an immaterial mind. If it's true that consciousness is produced by the physical brain, and if it's true that the physical brain is produced by a bunch of particles, the atoms, protons, neutrons, that make up the cells of the brain, the question is this, how is it possible that a collection of mindless particles can come together to create a mindful experience? Most people would probably agree that an atom doesn't have any consciousness. So then how can we explain a group of atoms coming together to all of a sudden have consciousness? See, here's the question. Why isn't all of our brain activity just happening in the dark with no one here to perceive it? No one truly knows the answer to that question. I mean, theoretically, we could just as easily be organic biological robots with no inner awareness or no experience of life, right? So why is it? How can we explain this miraculous thing that it is like something to be you, it's like something to be me? In philosophy, this is known as qualia, the inner subjective experience of life. Modern science generally teaches that consciousness emerges out of the complex interaction of neurons in the brain. There's no denying that brain function is directly linked to our conscious experience. But the idea that the brain produces consciousness has never been proven. Really, it's just our best guess. It's not a fact. It's one theory among other possible theories, right? And the hard problem is presenting a fundamental challenge to this theory of brain-based consciousness. Now, the hard problem of consciousness is a term that was coined by philosopher David Chalmers back in the 1990s, who suggests that the only way that we can resolve the hard problem of consciousness is if we consider radical new theories about the nature of consciousness and its relationship to the brain. Here he is in a recent TED Talk speaking to this exact point. Physicists sometimes take some aspects of the universe as fundamental building blocks, space, and time, and mass. These fundamental properties and laws aren't explained in terms of anything more basic. Rather, they're taken as primitive, and you build up the world from there. Now, sometimes the list of fundamentals expands. If you can't explain consciousness in terms of the existing fundamentals, space, time, mass, charge, then as a matter of logic, you need to expand the list. The natural thing to do is to postulate consciousness itself as something fundamental. As Chalmers says, 
If we can't explain consciousness by any of the known existing fundamentals, the natural thing to do is to postulate that consciousness itself is fundamental. And this here, my friends, this is the big revolutionary idea that could change everything that we know. Now, before saying more about that, I want to share an analogy just to really illustrate this point. And it's an analogy I've shared in previous videos, but it's a, it's a useful comparison. If we compare the brain to a computer, a computer runs on electricity. It's animated by an electrical current, right? But does the computer itself create or produce or generate electricity? No. When the computer breaks down, does that mean that electricity ceases to exist? No, of course not, right? Electricity, the electromagnetic force, is a way greater and more fundamental phenomenon than the hardware of any one computer. And just in the same way, it's absolutely possible that the brain biocomputer doesn't produce consciousness, but rather is a receiver of consciousness. And right now, the way that modern science is looking for the source of consciousness inside the physical brain is like trying to find the source of electricity inside the hardware of a computer. It ain't gonna happen, right? We have to open our minds to a greater reality. We have to consider other possibilities here. And that's exactly what Chalmers is suggesting when he says that consciousness is fundamental. Because from that perspective, that offers a solution to the hard problem of consciousness. Now, the idea that consciousness is fundamental is often referred to as non-local consciousness, which is a theory that consciousness is not localized in the brain or body. It's beyond space and time and this physical universe altogether. It's fundamental. From this perspective, consciousness isn't inside the body. The body, and all of this universe is inside of consciousness. One way of starting to imagine this is that the consciousness within each one of us is part of a greater field. Imagine an ocean of consciousness that has no limits. And each one of us is like a wave appearing on the surface of the ocean. And if we're looking on the surface, we can see a wave there and a wave there. And in reality, they are two separate and distinct waves. But on a deeper level, they're both expressions of the same infinite unified field of consciousness. This is a truly revolutionary idea because right now, modern science exists in a paradigm of materialism, which says that physical matter is the fundamental reality and that all things, including mental states and consciousness, are results of material interactions with, of material things, to quote Wikipedia. And we could be on the verge of completely flipping that upside down, or rather, right side up. And isn't it interesting that this is exactly what spiritual teachers, mystics, shamans, and sages have been telling us since the dawn of time, is that there's something within us that's fundamental that we're all unified expressions of the same infinite source and that there's more to what we are than this one human lifetime. Non-local consciousness represents a legitimate scientific theory that we are infinite divine beings in a temporary human lifetime. Could it be that modern science thousands of years later is just now starting to catch up to this ancient wisdom of our ancestors. Personally, I do believe so. That being said, it's important to take a step back and acknowledge that, of course, all of this is highly controversial. I mean, many, many people completely, you know, outright dismiss or reject the idea of non-local consciousness. But those same people have no explanation for the hard problem of consciousness. And the fact of the matter is that there are many bodies of scientific research and evidence that clearly point to this conclusion that consciousness is fundamental. And for almost a decade here on this channel, I've been sharing compelling evidence that there is way more to the mystery of consciousness than this physical brain. 
And I just want to invite a moment to sit with how profound this really is. It's not out there somewhere. It's within each one of us. If consciousness is fundamental, all the ancient teachings about soul or spirit are true. There is something within each one of us that continues on beyond this lifetime, right? If we sit with that possibility, that extraordinary possibility, which I'm convinced to be true, there's a very natural feeling of awe, of wonder, and of expansion, right? And I believe that these ancient wisdom teachings from our ancestors around the world, that there's more to what we are than the physical, is exactly what we need, is exactly what we're missing here in the modern era. Because we've lost our connection to spirit. We've lost our connection to the sacredness of life. And look what a mess. Look what a mess. So here the hard problem of consciousness is offering an opportunity to bridge the gap between science and spirituality. And the day that happens, humankind is going to evolve. It's just like my favorite Nikola Tesla quote, which I seem to share in every video. The day that science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. I am really curious to hear your thoughts. Please comment down below. What do you make of all this? What do you think of the idea of non-local consciousness? Is this leading us towards the next great scientific revolution? Please like and subscribe to support this channel. You can also visit me on Patreon and I'll appreciate it so very much. Thanks and see you back here very soon.